The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Um, first question I've got is, first of all, how, how is the book doing? Uh, the book is now a uh, bestseller. It's number six on the New York Times bestseller list. And that was after four days of sales. It'll be on the list published in the newspaper on June 5th of the New York Times. <laughs> and I'm sure the New York Times hates to do it. Oh, absolutely. The New York Times has resisted this book so hard and done everything they can to ridicule and um, you know, dismiss the book. But I'm sure uh, it's painful for the New York Times to have to admit that the book is a bestseller. Oh, absolutely. So now that it's starting to be on the best New York Times bestseller list, I see it was on the USA Today list as well. Um, right. Now that it's starting to appear... The ABC, the Rogers list, the ABC list, it's made quite a few bestseller lists. So now that it's on these lists, maybe it's too soon to tell, but is the mainstream media starting to take notice, just like they had to take notice when your book, Unfit for Command, came out? I think it's starting. I think the, the mainstream media will be under increasing pressure. Uh, we're continuing to write articles in World Net Daily um, about uh, you know, the birth certificate fraud. Uh, we maintain this is a forgery. Uh, we'll have a three-series of uh, uh, articles coming out this week on Doug Voigt, B-O-G-T. Doug Voigt is a scanner expert. And um, Doug is and also, before that, he, he's owned since 1993 a company which sells scanners worldwide. Before that, Doug Voigt uh, owned a, a typesetting company. So he's an extensive forensic analysis as to why the Obama first certificate released on April 27th is fraudulent. I think it's very compelling. He's filed that as a criminal complaint with the FBI. So I don't think there's any way this uh, controversy is going to stop or let up. Uh, the mainstream media may try to suppress it from the news, but I think on the Internet with my book, uh, with people on talk radio, uh, this issue, like many others, uh, is going to continue to gain steam. Okay, so he's the one that's filed a criminal complaint then. Okay, because I've seen some accounts that said you were filing it. No, I, I'm going to report on it. I'm going to. I'm not really a scanner or, or you know, computer expert. I'm, I use computers all the time, but someone like Doug Voigt has all this experience, you know, these years of experience, and in the scanner industry and typesetting, so he'll file a complaint and I'll report on it. That makes a whole lot more sense. Sure. Um, one thing I, I've noticed, of course, obviously when your books came out, they've slammed it and they've criticized it left and right and tried to smear it the same as they did for your other books. At least with Unfit for Command, even though they made up specifics, they at least pretended to offer specifics. Have they did, did anything, a similar thing with this book yet or not? It's interesting. You know, uh, Jack, this book, uh, with, uh, where's the birth certificate? I've been called lots of names, and uh, the mainstream media has ignored the book and it's been, you know, roundly um, ridiculed by the White House. I mean, the White House is even producing uh, mugs and T-shirts and writing fundraising letters, mentioning me by name and saying the book is all lies. Uh, they haven't argued with the book at any specifics. Uh, the, where's the birth certificate? It's a tough book to argue with. I've got 125 exhibits in the book, all my basic important primary documents that are printed in glossy pages. So the reader can see it's, it's well documented and well substantiated for the arguments I'm making. And the White House and, you know, the critics of the mainstream media have not taken on any specific points the book makes and refused them or shown them to be an error. See, and that right there I think is significant. I mean, even if they try and stretch things, like, of course, you saw that with, with, with Unfit for Command, you know what I'm saying? how they can at least make it sound credible to a person that doesn't objectively look at it. I've, I've, I've noticed a lack of that myself with this book. Uh, it's, it's remarkable because if you take a look at the Amazon.com reviews, and those are very important. Uh, the people who are supporting the book are going into great detail about all the arguments the book makes, uh, the, you know, how it's well evidenced, that, uh, the new points, especially the lies that I show that Barack Obama has told, about his nativity story, his birth, his life, uh, his eligibility to be president. And the, the, uh, the reviewers who are disliking the book are just making ad hominem attacks and dismissing the book. It's obvious they haven't read it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, you know, clear that the opposition, other than calling the names and sputtering, doesn't know what to do about this book. And the mainstream media has no reason to keep me off of television except that you know, the partisan media, including today Fox, 
uh, doesn't want to cover this issue. Obama's being given a pass by the mainstream media. They want to make this issue go away. And I point out the double standard. I mean, the first part of my book um, documents how the mainstream media and the Democrats attacked John McCain viciously on his eligibility to be president. Uh, you know, the first 15 exhibits in the book are the articles that appeared repeatedly in 2008. I mean, Wall Street Journal, does John McCain have a birthplace problem? February 28, 2008. MSNBC, McCain's citizenship call into question. February 29, 2008. Uh, it goes on. I mean, Washington Post, McCain's birth abroad stirs legal debate, May 2, 2008. Well, John McCain came to Congress, and he got to pass Senate Resolution 511 that said he was a, was a natural-born citizen because he had two U.S. parents who were citizens when he was born, a critical element of being a natural-born citizen. And John McCain was born in the Panama Canal Zone, and his father was at the naval base there, and his mother was visiting. Now, Congress says it was not an exception that Congress, you know, the founding fathers meant that somebody was born outside the country if their parents were serving the military, that they would no longer be a natural-born citizen and would be unable to run for president. That's not what the founders intended. So Barack Obama, then, doesn't present his birth qualifications to Congress. He knows he can't meet this criteria. Barack Obama's father is Kenyan. So Barack Obama was citizen of the Commonwealth of Great Britain and the United States, a dual citizen, and he was a Commonwealth country. And at birth... As a dual citizen, Obama was disqualified from running for president. But, you know, this is the kind of double standard where the arguments so clearly disqualify Obama, but even if he was born in the United States. And I raise, you know, excellent arguments in the book why I think it's uh, improbable that Obama was born in Hawaii. The mainstream media gives Obama a pass on this and has always done it. And I think over time, the American people who read my book, who you know, listen to radio shows like yours, who read... WND and take a serious look at the evidence, I'm going to see that Obama is uh, ineligible for president. He's been lying. Well, I think the truth definitely will come out. The one thing I appreciate about your book, Dr. Corsi, is not just the information it contains, but how thoroughly researched it is. I mean, I know from experience, because I've done research for a college professor in Miami, did a couple of books on Christianity and American history that slam the left and the right, you know, we have a document that left and right. I know if you have one area where you don't document it properly, they'll catch it and they'll pick up on it. Well, that, I think that's why the book has uh, been so little attack, other than a broadside kind of ridicule attack. Uh, anybody reading the book knows it's a seriously written book, well documented. There's 125 documents here. Uh, I published them. I decided to actually print the documents so that you could see them yourself and look at the documents and the evidence and come to your own conclusion. And that's something that you know, Obama's supporters will never do. Yeah, I was stunned when I, when I got the book and I, and I saw over, like you said, over 100 pages of just, you know, photographs and stuff documenting. I've never seen a book with that much documentation, photographic documentation in it. The other thing I thought was impressive about your book, I mean, I've read most of the World in the Daily articles because I've probably missed a few over the years, you know how that is. But what impressed me was a lot of the information I'd heard from World in the Daily, but how you took it and you expounded on like the McCain section that you mentioned. Yeah. I'd heard the McCain thing, but when you just really hit that point home with a lot of new facts to back up what I'd heard about McCain before, that's what really impressed me. Well, it has been a continuing research effort for me for three years. And I, you know, I was in Kenya. In fact, I was deported from Kenya. I was looking for Obama birth records. I wanted to give a press conference the last day I was there. And uh, Obama's uh, political buddy, Rilo Odinga, objected and had me deported. But I kept excellent contacts from Kenya and have continued to get information out of Kenya from sources still there. I've been to Hawaii multiple times. I've hired private investigators in Hawaii. And I've gone through the library research in Honolulu and the archives in Washington. I mean, it's been all over getting documentary evidence on Obama, his father, his mother, uh, the birth nativity story, uh, you know, the lies told in dreams from my father. I've interviewed dozens of people who knew Obama, knew the facts of his life. And so my research has been continuing. The articles in World Net Daily 
uh, often the beginning of my research, but the book you know, sums it all up and pulls together the most current research. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's compelling. I think any, I think it's why the White House has also fought so hard about the book. I'm confident that the book is what forced the White House to release the birth certificate, not Donald Trump. I think it was the book. I believe that the White House knew that if people read this book extensively, if it gets widely read in the American people, the Obama presidency cannot survive. Because it's obvious and clear the arguments are compelling that Barack Obama is not a natural-born citizen under the meaning of Article 2, Section 1. Even from the starting point that his father was Kenyan when he was born, he did not have two citizen parents, Barack Obama, when he was born. That alone should disqualify Barack Obama, whether he was born in Hawaii or not. Right. Now, yeah, I do agree with you 100% about your book, which I believe is what forced the release of it. In fact, I even said that in an editorial that we did, basically blasting the other paper in town following Colonel Lakin's release. I made it, I said it was not Donald Trump. It was your book being one, number one on Amazon.com that forced that. So I right. totally agree with that. Um, going back, to, so we mentioned Donald Trump there. What exactly do you think is going on with Donald Trump? I mean, I understand well, he actually know. had a copy of the book. I, I think Donald Trump... You know, it's at a minimum, is confused as to what role he wants to play. I don't think, I, I think he was, in a sense, actively working with the White House. And you know, whether it was direct cooperation, I'm not sure, but clearly, you know, Donald Trump went out and said, I want to see the birth certificate. He pounded those drops. And it could have easily been a setup. Here comes Obama, then releases the long form birth certificate, and Trump drops that drops out. Mainstream media says, well, if it's good enough for Donald Trump, it ought to be good enough for everybody. And I, you know, I've talked to Trump many times. He's called. I've said, look, now if you really want to say that you're still in the game, then do what I'm doing. That is, go out and ask for the original, the best evidence of this birth certificate, which is the original in the vault in Hawaii, still not released to the public. Let's see that document. Let's get it examined by forensic experts. We could independently determine if it's authentic. Uh, and let's also get the patient records from uh, the hospital, Kapiolani, and certainly this Dr. Sinclair ought to have patient records. Why don't we uh, search for corroboration that, in fact, Ann Dunham ever was a patient of that doctor and did go to the hospital and have the baby. Those records ought to be available to even today. And Trump wouldn't press those issues. Mm -hmm. and, you know, then I watched Trump get a nice payday uh, from GE through NBC, $60 million contract on The Apprentice. And, uh, you know, GE still owns 48% of NBC, along with Comcast owning, I think, 52%. And I'm waiting to see if Donald Trump starts building casinos in uh, Chicago with Rahm Emanuel. I mean, that's, I'll probably be investigating because this whole thing is a little too tight, too little nicely set up for the issue to come front and center and then Obama to drop the issue. You know, Donald Trump to drop the issue, Obama to say, see this, I've proved I was, you know, here's my birth certificate was authentic and satisfied Trump. I'm very distrustful of the whole Trump relationship. I understand. I had people asking me before it was released, when Trump was making it an issue, what my thoughts were on it, you know, and whether he'd, whether he'd jump in the race and so forth. And I made the same statement, similar to what you said. I said, wait and see what happens if it gets released. I said, if it gets released and Trump continues to harp on it, then we'll know he's a serious contender. If he drops the issue, we know that he wasn't serious to begin with. And I think Trump hurt himself. I think, uh, you know, I don't think Trump was ever really playing for the presidential nomination, even though he said he was. He's, never, he's done this before. I can believe that Trump was playing for his own economic motivation to get that NBC contract secured and to, uh, you know, raise its value. And I think build casinos in Chicago, I'm expecting Trump to be in the middle of that. Uh, but, you know, from my point of view, look, people have got to understand that this was part of the strategy I've had from the beginning. I tried to explain this to uh, people. Uh, Joseph Aaron said maybe we should title the book Ineligible for Command. Uh, you know, put kind of off my unfit for command by co-author with John O'Neill. Mm -hmm. But no, let's, let's stay with where's the birth certificate, because I think it's 50-50. We can force Obama to release the birth certificate just to prevent the book from being published. Joseph said, well, you know, set us back in marketing. People say, where's the birth certificate, the title of the book? Well, it's right there on the White House website. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, the Democrats did play, you know, ridicule me with that answer. But, you know, in fact, a month before the birth certificate has been, was released, and I've documented this on World Net Daily, we've written articles about it, I've got the files, uh, date stamped on my computer, before February 24th, and inside, one of my top intelligence sources in Hawaii called and said that a mole that we've had within the Hawaii Department of Health went and looked at the forged Obama birth certificate was now present in the logbook. It had not been before. I was told it had Kapiolani Hospital on it. Uh, the mole did not know the name of the doctor. But at any rate, we were tipped off, and we still didn't change the title of the book. Because my thought was, we're today in a very fundamentally different place than we were before April 27th, when the White House released this document. And it's where I want to be. One, Obama now owns this document. He's in the chain of command. He's got all this correspondence in the White House that said Obama authorized the document to be released. He sent the Perkins Corley lawyers there to get the document. Uh, he showed up in the White House press room and said, I, this is my birth certificate. Obama owns this document. With a short form, Obama could have said, well, my people did that. You know, I stayed above the fray. My people did that. I wasn't responsible. Now he's responsible. And secondly, now that we have this long-form birth certificate, which I firmly believe is forged, the White House owns this document. The White House cannot come out now and say, uh, oh, we meant this other birth certificate over here. We made a mistake. And, you know, from now and on, going forward in history, the, the, White, the White House, the Obama presidency, and legitimacy depends on that, uh, that document being authentic. I'm able to demonstrate this to the satisfaction of the public uh, that it's a forgery right now. It could jeopardize whether or not the Obama administration will be allowed to stay in office until the 2012 election. Historically, it was demonstrated to be a fraud. Again, the revision will be that the Obama administration should have been disgraced and thrown out of office, which will continue to cause a serious debate and controversy within U.S. history. But the Obama administration now owns this document. And I think it's fraudulent. I don't think, I think the evidence is increasingly clear that Obama was not born in Hawaii and that he was born in Kenya. Yeah, I've read the evidence, and I agree. I, I believe it's a forgery based on what I've seen. One thing that stands out to me, I mean, I have a copy of my original birth certificate I've had for years. I was born in Ohio, but it's a, it looks like it was taken off a microfiche copy, meaning it's white on black. Yeah, and which which and I was only born, I was born in 1964, which is you know around the same age as Obama was. So the first thing that struck me is this doesn't look like a document from that age, from that era. Well, and also the we have the Nordikes birth certificates, mm -hmm. and they were issued as they were born the day after Obama in Kapolani Hospital. They're issued as a photostat from microfilm. How is it that Obama's documents a paper document? How is it only Obama's? document didn't get put on microfilm if all the others of that air did. It makes no sense at all. And there are other apparent problems with the document. The, the letters are imposed on the document. There's white space behind the letters. Um, there's modification of the doc, of, you know, there's uh, bitmap and grayscale, you know, characters mixed together, which clearly shows that this is a composite document. It was composed probably of several original birth certificates and done by some graphic artist who put the final version together. Now, one question I've got, and I realize this is probably just going to be your opinion, but with the Nordyke document out there and with the Obama administration having close to three years to come up with something, why do you think they produce such a poor forgery? Well, it's interesting. You know, I think, uh, first of all, the White House could not put out a request for proposal to find the best forger in the country to come forward and do the job. So they're stuck with a small inner group. I think they probably ended up with some graphic artist who you know, may have been able to use Illustrator and Photoshop and thought he was going to be able to do a good job. But forging a document in this day and age is a very difficult thing to do uh, because there's so many experts who can look at documents and recognize forgeries right away. Uh, and also... Why the White House released an electronic file is beyond me. When the White House, um, you know, supporting documents they released said that they flew out 
to California and picked up paper documents. It didn't make no sense at all why. And those paper documents have never been seen, because all the White House released was the electronic file and a Xerox of the electronic file, which is not the certified copy it was supposed to have been. And how that Xerox was produced without the hash marks, the green hash marks, is a mystery, too. I mean, this is a forensic nightmare for the White House. And if you go on the White House website today, I noticed that this morning, you can't download the president's birth certificate anymore, and they've removed the supporting documents which says how they got it. I think the White House has known for some time that this is a, a vulnerability, and they're trying to now even erase the evidence that they produced. Mm -hmm. so, I think my book makes a clear case. Look, when you take a look at where's the birth certificate, you realize the lies Obama's told, that his mother and father did not live together in Hawaii um, for until well, Barack Obama Sr. went to Harvard for college. But mommy and daddy may never have lived together as man and wife. And Dunham, um, three weeks after the baby was born, took off for Seattle, and she enrolled at the University of Washington in Seattle. Took night courses. I mean, I've got almost 10 pages of documents that where's the birth certificate. I've got a college transcript. University of Washington, I've got the course catalog of the courses she took, a photograph of the place where, the house where she had her apartment. Um, and, you know, if mommy and daddy never lived together, uh, there's no marriage certificate. Ann Dunham's got a missing six months in a timeline where she could easily have gone to Kenya to have this baby. Uh, Ann Dunham may well have been trying to convince Barack Obama to let her be the, the wife. Barack Obama was evidently not convinced even by Ann Dunham flying to Kenya to convince the family. And I've released now the documents I have from Kenya, which show the Kenyan government went through an extensive. The grandmothers, they argue in the book, you know, where's the birth certificate? I show the grandmother who said forever that oh, she was president of Obama's birth in Mombasa. Well, now the Kenyan government has you know, released I've got the documents showing uh, the Kenyan government uh, concluded that 1961 birth records in Kenya were bought, were criminally tampered with to eliminate the evidence of Obama's birth records. Well, that's pretty strong evidence that they existed. And Obama was born in Mombasa, like the grandmothers always said. Yeah, when I first started out covering the issue, the take that I always took whenever anybody asked me was, if you'd asked me six months ago, even or, or a year ago, my answer would have been, I honestly don't know if he was born because he didn't release the information. But I'm like you, the more I've seen, the more I'm definitely agreeing with a Kenyan birth. And more evidence is coming out all the time, Jack. I'm telling you, I'm getting, I get a thousand emails a day. And I'm getting experts and people who are, I don't even know where I'm getting all the information. But after this fraudulent birth certificate was released, I think a number of people, uh, maybe even within the government, are realizing that this is a fraud, I'm getting new information I didn't have before. Getting new information from Kenya I didn't have before as well. Mm -hmm. And what's clear is that this has been a massive cover-up that Obama has engineered. Dreams for my father, as I point out, where's the birth certificate, is a misinformation job. It sets, sets you off the wrong track. Obama tells enough lies and enough fabrications about his background. He even gets set off by the Indonesian story. You know, Barack Obama never in Dreams from My Father mentions the name Sartoro once. Yet, the documents I've got here, uh, Barack Obama was enrolled in school in Indonesia as Barry Sartoro, not Barack Obama. And his mother, Exhibit 100 in Dreams from My you Father, know, in, in, uh, where's the birth certificate? I show you the passport application where Anne Dunham, the mother, removed Obama as a child from her passport when they were in Indonesia and indicated Obama's Indonesian surname, Barack Hussein Obama Soibarka. Now, if Obama was adopted in Indonesia, he had an Indonesian passport, he again compromised his natural-born citizenship status. You can't be a dual citizen and natural-born citizen. And then, by the way, what's Obama's legal name? And here we got, you know, Barack Hussein, Barry, uh, Obama, Sartoro, Sartarka. And what's the official re real name here? And, you know, if we don't even know 
the legal name of the guy who's president, and we can't see his passport records, as I point out, Appendix A, or his kindergarten records, or his school records, or if he's a foreign student, uh, or a foreign, he got foreign tuition aid when he was in college or going to law school. Uh, we don't know even all the countries. We don't have a complete list of all the countries Barack Obama has been in traveling, nor his passport or other records. Uh, this is the most undocumented president we've ever had, and I think if these issues are not resolved uh, before the 2012 election, the issue of eligibility is going to be fought all over again, and Barack Obama is going to be under pressure once again to show documents he refuses to show the public. And, you know, Barack Obama's own words points out that politicians who will not show you documents have something to hide. Oh, absolutely. I, I even remember... You mentioned, of course, you mentioned in your book, I uh, was passport, the White House passport showed it didn't have the name Junior on it. Or I didn't say the second on it, excuse me. And I noticed I caught that right away um, when that first came out. I, 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 I mean, supposedly now we've got the birth certificate that says second. Well, your, your passport is supposed to be issued in the same name as your birth certificate. So if Barack Obama produced this birth certificate for his passport, why does his passport reflect the name that's on the birth certificate? Yeah, it is an interesting question. Um, I've heard that somebody had said you might you might have a tip on the first name of the forger of the document. Well, I, I'm pretty I'm getting pretty close because I think the forger uh, basically coded their name into the document. Uh, take a look at the take a look at the um, you know, that stamp the stamp down there of the. Um, uh, registrar, state registrar. And instead of saying D record, it says TXE record. Mm -hmm. And then look at the A of Alvin and the Alvin of Naka. And magnify about 100%. It's got a smiley face in it. Yes, I've seen that. Well, that smiley face is really made of an E. An E that's written into that loop. Mm -hmm. And I think the. Uh, I'm increasingly working on the theory that the name Mike is written into this. Take a look at the Dr. Sinclair's signature. And the I N S I N T L A I R. There's an N I in there that sure looks like an M I. There's a lot of I code there's a lot of here I'm putting together that I'm pretty preliminary on. Sure. But it sure looks interesting to me that you've got a misspelling in a stamp. I've seen hundreds of Anaka stamps. There's never an X or a K there, and that <clears throat> A and Alvin, there's never been a smiley face or an E written into the loop. And I think this is, you know, very likely when we put this together, these are going to be the clues that are going to lead us to who, in fact, the forger was, who the graphic artist was, that may have put a signature into this that we can recognize. So I've got a couple suspects in mind that I'm working very hard to pin down. Sure. Well, it's interesting because I know I know a lot of times forgers do put their information in a document, kind of like as a sign of pride. Well, yes, I mean I think even art forgers love to have their Van Gogh hanging in a museum that somebody finally recognizes was done by X Y Z forger 50 years after the museum bought it. Forgers have a pride too, and they like to be recognized. They leave little trace marks into their documents that help you ultimately figure out who they are. I'm going to have to get going. I've got another interview coming right up now. Okay. And so I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you today. Yes. Hey, one thing I'll let you go before I let you go. I'll probably send you a tip, maybe something you could research. I have a critic called Historian Dude. He's so prolific, there's no way he can be an independent citizen. I, um, you would have to research it with his IP address because we don't have the resources to track IP addresses. Send it to me. Yes. I'll do it. Great. Hold on one second. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, I'm getting the next call coming right yeah, in. Yeah, no, be at jcorsi at wnd.com. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm right there. Well, thank you, Dr. Corsi. You have a wonderful day. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.